Hi guys, hi Trillion Babes, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is China Trill, if you're new here, you need to subscribe. And if you're watching me and you've been watching my YouTube videos, why are you not subscribed? I'll wait so you can do that. Comment on some videos, like some videos, and get into the mix of what I do, watch the movies that I make, and yeah <laughs> today's video is going to be a mental health video yes today we are going to be focusing on specifically depression and anxiety because i feel like we need to focus on that in today's time in 2023 because a lot of people don't talk about it a lot of people aren't compassionate about it enough and a lot of people just kind of don't believe in mental health or mental illness they just either bypass it or just make excuses and they don't believe that it's a real thing and people can suffer from mental health reasons that aren't even any fault so i feel like today's video definitely needs to be about mental health we definitely need to talk about that so if you want to watch and you want to hear what i got to say about that and my opinions then you need to tune in watch today's video because it's an important one and like i said make sure you subscribe like and comment on some videos we are going to be focusing on specifically depression and anxiety drum roll because i feel like in today's time my age and just a lot of celebrities a lot of them suffer from depression and a lot of them suffer from anxiety whether it be social anxiety or just having anxiety in general so it needs to be talked about because like i said people aren't compassionate about it enough i know when it comes to work and school they just don't care like if you tell your job oh you know i'm feeling depressed they just gonna be like okay are you gonna come to work tomorrow and i just feel like that's not always a good thing sometimes people really need a break you never know what people are going through in their life so it just needs to be considered more when people tell you that they are depressed or they're feeling sad or that they need to talk you really should consider that a lot more and be a lot more compassionate especially when it comes to school and work um, those two specifically because I feel like those are the most social places that we go to as adults. Um, I kind of got a handy dandy notebook because I just had a lot that I wanted to touch on with this topic and I feel like it's a lot of important key points that I want to touch on and I kind of didn't want to forget them. So just so y'all follow along with me and we're on the same page, I'm going to read the definition to anxiety and depression. Anxiety, a feeling of worry, nervousness, uneasy, typically about an event or something with an uncertain outcome. Another definition is mental condition characterized by excessive apprehensiveness about real or perceived threats, typically leading to avoidance behavior. Um, some symptoms are increased heart rate, muscle tension, clammy hands, sweating in general, or just getting out of the situation fast as possible. Um, the definition to depression, a group of conditions associated with the elevate, the elevation or lowering a person's mood. Sorry y'all, that fucked me up real quick. The elevation or lowering a person's mood. So whether it be high or low, whatever mental state that you have that's high or low and it's excessive that is depression so it's many different forms of depression like it is many different forms of anxiety like i said you can have social anxiety with depression you can either have postpartum depression um you can kind of have ptsd not kind of but that kind of plays into having depression and then you can have major depression, clinical depression. So it's a couple different type of depressions that you can have. But I kind of want to just keep it very, very general, I guess. Um, last year, no, actually the beginning of, well, no, we can talk about last year. So last year I had started school and I was in school for a while. And I really, 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 really loved school for about three or four months. And then I just got really, really sad, but I moved. So I don't know if that triggered me being sad because sometimes that's how mental illness works. Like if you have a big change or like a traumatic 
incident that happens in your life, it can trigger you being depressed or it can trigger you having anxiety. So I moved and I got really, really sad. I was so sad to the point where like, I didn't want to get out of bed. I was just like sleeping my life away for weeks in a dark room. I wasn't even eating. I wasn't working out. Like I wasn't even being social with my family members or the people that I was around. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go get it checked out because i couldn't sleep either i have really 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 bad insomnia like i could not sleep for more than three or four hours and it was like multiple days at a time sorry y'all i seen somebody walking a dog so i was looking in the background it was like multiple days at a time where i couldn't sleep so i'm like let me go get this checked out I went to this one place and they referred me to a specialist because the place that I went to couldn't really help what I had going on. So when I went to the specialist, I was medically diagnosed with depression, major depression and anxiety. So that's another reason why I kind of wanted to talk about those two today. That's another reason why I kind of just gave you the two definitions so you can kind of know what it is. and why certain triggers um trigger people with mental illness basically so i have wrote down how does these two mental illness affect your daily life because i feel like that's very important um that's another reason why i said people should have a little bit more compassion because sometimes when you tell people you're depressed they just be like oh you'll get over it or or just get over it in general they'll be like you're okay you just need to go work out you're okay you just need to go out with your friends and have some fun it's not as simple as that like people who have depression can't just turn that shit off because the people around them are telling them to turn it off <coughs> excuse me fuck or the people who are around them feel like it's inconvenient for them so they don't need you to be depressed right now um so they need to know how it affects their daily life so it makes you unmotivated it makes you sad you don't have no energy like you literally don't want to do anything and that played a part in why i was just sitting in my room and i didn't want to go nowhere i didn't want to be around nobody i felt like that was a main factor i was unmotivated because i was depressed so yeah i had low energy definitely had low energy when you um are depressed you zone out a lot you bite your fingernails you also bite your fingernails a lot when you have anxiety as well like if you're just sitting in a place and you just start biting your fingernails because you are nervous or you don't know what's about to happen next you're literally having an anxiety attack you just don't know that um you compare your life a lot to others when you have depression you be like oh i wish i had a normal life which is what the fuck is a normal life but that's how you think you're like i wish i had a normal life um if i was in college and doing all of these things that my friend is doing maybe i wouldn't be depressed maybe my family and my friends would love me more like you just have all type of thoughts like that when you're depressed especially um about comparing your life to others you have little to no social life when you're depressed because you get in these states where you just push everybody out because sometimes you try to explain to people that you're depressed and like I said, they kind of just dismiss your feelings. So it makes you shut down and it makes you not even want to talk about it anymore and you kind of just sit in your own shell and you kind of just wallow in your own pity until you get out of it yourself because you don't really have anybody else to lean on. Um, so another one is poor eating when you're depressed and I feel like that's kind of triggering because being depressed and not eating is not equivalent to having an eating disorder if you follow what I'm saying um having an eating disorder is completely different than being depressed and not eating because sometimes like I said when you're sitting in a room and you're depressed you don't feel like getting out of bed you don't feel like going to the bathroom you don't want to get up and eat anything because you don't even have an appetite sometimes when you're depressed you're kind of just like fuck it 
I'm just about to starve to death because I don't even give a fuck no more. Not saying that's how everybody feel when they have depression, but that's how a lot of people feel. They just don't have the energy to do anything, whether that be getting up and going to the bathroom or getting up and making food or just deciding on what they're going to eat. But like I said, that's not the same thing as having a eating disorder. Um, how does anxiety affect your daily life? So we're moving on from depression and how depression affects your daily life. And we're talking about how anxiety affects your daily life now. Um, <clears throat> you avoid certain places when you have anxiety, especially when you have social anxiety. The places where your social anxiety is going to skyrocket through the roof you are going to avoid that place at all costs so if you like are in school and every single day before you go to school you're like having a mini fucking meltdown or you're having an anxiety attack or you don't even want to go to school because you know that something bad is going to happen or you feel like something bad is going to happen and that just continues for multiple days i'm not talking about this just happening over and over a weekend because you got to write a paper and you don't know if the paper you turn in is going to be a good paper so you freaking out that's having anxiety but that's not having um medically diagnosed anxiety that's like anxiety that comes and go with certain situations which is completely normal that type of anxiety is completely different than someone who has a mental illness and has anxiety those are two whole completely different anxieties so um like i said you kind of avoid the entire situation when you have anxiety you kind of avoid the person if you know a person and the encounter with them is going to end a certain way you avoid them if you know a place that you're going to go to and it's going to avoid in a weird way or you feel like you're going to have encounters that are going to make you uncomfortable you're going to avoid it whether that be work I don't know, maybe you don't like being around a lot of people, so you're going to avoid going to carnivals, you're going to avoid going to the mall. Those certain things are giving you anxiety. But when you feel like that every hour on the hour, all day, every day, 24-7, then you probably have a more serious case of anxiety. And there's things that could possibly help with that besides avoiding those type of situations altogether so if you have anxiety like that and you have it 24 7 you should probably talk to a psychiatrist so that you could take some other route of dealing with that so that you can kind of face those places if you're scared of carnivals because it's a lot of people there maybe you could talk to your psychiatrist about it and you can come up with some type of plan where you can eventually go to carnivals and it doesn't give you so much anxiety um, having anxiety can definitely lead to having sleep disorders like insomnia. That is how I knew I triggered something up here because I could not sleep. So you can definitely um, manifest some insomnia when you have anxiety. Like I said, what if you have a test tomorrow and the night before you can't sleep? that's a form of having anxiety but when you feel like that all day every day that's a bigger case of having anxiety um i want to talk about some of the stigmas of mental health because like i said some people don't believe in it if you have depression right say you're sitting in a room and y'all are just on the topic of having depression. Some people will be like, I don't feel bad for people who want to kill themselves. I don't feel bad for people who are depressed and they just sit in a house and don't want to go nowhere and do nothing with their life. Well, you should feel bad for them. Some people don't choose to be that way. Some people are born and they are genetically born with mental illnesses. They have no choice over it. Or some people go through traumatic situations and they have no choice over the mental illness that they develop. So you should feel bad for people who wanna kill themselves. You should wanna to talk to people who wanna kill themselves and maybe tell them that they have somebody that care about them or have somebody that love them instead of just dismissing it all together so that's kind of why i want to talk about some of the stigmas of mental health 
um, some of the negative words that come along with mental health are crazy. Oh, she crazy. No, she not. She just can't figure out how to deal with her emotions or he just can't figure out how to deal with his emotions. They heighten at a level that they shouldn't be heightening at or that normal people don't heighten. So if somebody gets really, really mad like that about something, they could be depressed because irritability is definitely a symptom of depression so it takes nothing to irritate somebody who has depression so instead of calling somebody crazy maybe you should try and understand them a little bit more um they're dangerous people with mental health issues are dangerous people with mental health issues all of them are not dangerous some of those people take medications they have other routes and other alternatives to try and deal with their mental health and they pose no harm or no threat to people in society so not all people who have mental health issues are dangerous or crazy or liars or overreacting those two are really 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 big words i want to talk about um people with mental health cannot always control how they react to certain situations or the stuff that they say so they might say something one minute and then the next minute they might say something completely different to normal people that comes off as somebody being a liar or somebody being deceitful but people with mental health issues don't know that they're being that way <laughs> it just is part of their personality or they have some type of chemical imbalance upstairs that just makes them come off as a liar to normal people um they're overreacting that ties into people being crazy like i said some people can get really mad when they're depressed some people can get really sad when they're depressed so if you say something that can be very very triggering to a person who has a mental health um issue then they can seem like they're overreacting to you but to them that situation is triggering you have no idea about all the things that's floating around in their head you have no idea what they've been through and some of the things that people have said to them to break them down or you know tear their character apart you have no idea what that person has been through so to them or the opposing person who doesn't have a mental health issue it seems like that person is overreacting but they're probably not even overreacting that's just a trigger for them um people with mental health issues are incapable that's another big one if i have anxiety that doesn't mean i can't be the mayor if i have depression that doesn't mean i can't be the president just because people have mental health issues does not mean that they are incapable or incapable of doing certain tasks or being very important professional people in the world a lot of celebrities suffer from depression. Um, Hastily has bipolar disorder. Selena Gomez has bipolar disorder. And they are two of the biggest, I want to say pop stars, roughly. But they are two of the biggest, most famous pop stars in the world. You can literally do anything that you put your mind to. Just because you have depression doesn't mean you can't do it. I know sometimes depression can make you feel really helpless it can make you feel really hopeless it can make you feel like you're untalented it'll doubt you. it'll make you doubt yourself so just because you have these type of mental health issues does not mean that you can't do the things that you want to do or you can't achieve the dreams that you want to achieve um i wrote down some things but i kind of already covered that uh some of the things that people do or the stigmas of mental health is leaving people out who have no mental health issues because they don't fit social standards that's just saying certain friend, friend groups a certain girl won't be invited to certain things because oh she's crazy or oh she's weird she's she's weird when we're in social places she's quiet and she doesn't talk to anyone and she just sits in the corner i'm not inviting her 
Well, nine times out of 10, that person probably has social anxiety. And her sitting in the corner is the only way that she can handle being around all those people and her emotions being so heightened to the point where she probably can't handle it mentally. So the only thing that she can do is, you know, sit off by herself and kind of calm down. I don't think that that's a, a definite reason for not inviting someone or not being friends with someone. So you are definitely left out a lot when you have mental health issues. You're definitely bullied when you have mental health issues. And that's not okay. Cause like I said, some people are born with these things. It's, it's genetics, they have no choice over it. And we shouldn't punish someone who don't have a choice over something that they have mentally. Um, How does depression make you feel? So we're gonna get into maybe realizing some symptoms of depression whether it be within yourself or other people your friends people that you love people are at work that you're friends with these are some of the symptoms of depression um you can feel hopeless you can... <clears throat> i'm really sorry you can feel hopelessness like i just said um sadness tired fatigue loss of appetite antisocial meaning not wanting to go anywhere i touched on that already um being a loner not having friends when you're depressed it's really really hard for you to make friends because like i said you don't have the normal social frequencies that other people have so it's a little bit harder to make friends because people look at you like you're weird or you're not normal um, and emptiness no matter how many people you have around you that tell you they love you every single day if you are depressed you are not going to feel that love it's not gonna register to you that you have all of these people around you that love you because mental health cannot be turned on and off it's something that's in your brain so if you're wired to feel that way you're just not gonna feel like anyone loves you so but it's other ways to get in around that like i said you can talk to a psychiatrist and they can help you break down the barriers and kind of allow people in and talk to people so that you can feel fulfilled so that you can do things to make you feel fulfilled so that you don't feel empty and unloved how does anxiety make you feel? So we're switching from depression and we're switching to anxiety and we're gonna talk about how anxiety makes you feel. Um, it makes you feel tense, sweaty. If you have sweaty or clammy palms, every time you're about to do something important or something and you don't know the outcome of it, say like a talent show or something like that, your hands are gonna be sweaty. That's you having a mini anxiety attack. I know that has happened to so many of you. You have been somewhere, I don't know, maybe took your car to go get fixed and you have no idea what's wrong with it, but you just know the bill is gonna be crazy and your hands start sweating because a person is walking up to you with the bill and letting you know how much it's gonna cost. That's you having an anxiety attack. But if you feel like that all day, every day, nine times out of 10, you have more of a serious case of anxiety um you feel irritable you feel sleepy or or fatigued i think i said that but you feel fatigued you can't sleep but you're also tired you can't stay asleep for a long time um you can't sleep because your mind is just racing about all the things you have to do tomorrow all of the things that you have to do in a week um the people that you have to see the meetings that you have to go to before bed, if you're thinking about all of that, you definitely have some anxiety for sure. I'm sorry, y'all. Something got my attention over here, so I'm looking at it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about why this YouTube video is important to me. I kind of touched on that earlier about how people just should be more compassionate, how I am someone who has been medically diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Um, it needs to be taken more seriously, it needs to be taught more in school, it needs to be taught more to kids because these things are real. People have these real life problems that affect their daily life. So it is definitely something that's important to me because I'm someone who has to deal with it every single day. 
and it's not easy some days i feel very very high and then other days i feel very very low so it's kind of just one of those things that i feel like is you need to work through it over time and it's not a, a band-aid a one fits all band-aid that you can slap on all mental health problems so it's definitely important to me if i'm ever able to be a mental health advocate i would definitely do that um my phone just died so i had to start recording this video again um it's definitely more important to me because i feel like it can stop suicide depression definitely leads to people committing suicide so that's definitely why it should be not just important to me but everybody else in the community because we can stop people from killing themselves um we can stop very very violent attacks that's another thing that depression leads to whether that be school shootings and stuff like that some people get bullied in high school to the point where they get really really depressed i'm not saying that this is the case for all school shootings but some people get really really depressed because they get bullied in high school and they shoot schools up so if we <coughs> pay attention to depression and anxiety a little bit more maybe those type of situations can be avoided right um i'm gonna be wrapping up this video soon i feel like this is probably the longest video i ever made so i'm gonna be wrapping this up soon and i kind of gotta watch baddies if y'all watch baddies drop some comments below i know this is kind of bad because baddies is not really good for the mental health like if you're there in that environment that's probably not a good environment for your mental health but if you watch baddies and you want me to review baddies then drop a comment below and i'll do that anyway um yeah so it can help stop suicides it can help stop victim blaming because some people blame the victim no matter what the victim has been through the victim can get hit by a bus for no apparent reason and the victim is still gonna get blamed so let's please stop victim blaming if people have ptsd let's not victim blame them if people have depression let's not victim blame them if people have social anxiety or or anxiety let's not victim blame them we don't do victim blaming on this channel i don't support that shit so let's stop doing that shit let's stop that stigma of mental health today please um some people are born with it like i said oh look at the sun okay she came out today fuck tomorrow the sun will come out tomorrow so you gotta hang on till tomorrow <laughs> um some people experience traumatic situations some people get mental health issues from genetics it comes from things that people can't control so that's why we need to talk about that in this video that's why we need to stop mental health stigmas and we can only do that if we work together to understand people a little bit more if somebody tell you they're depressed ask them why ask them if they want to talk ask them if they want to vent if somebody tells you that a certain situation gives them anxiety don't force them to do it don't get mad at them or be like oh you're boring maybe that person is really scared deep down inside and they just got anxiety about it and they just don't want to do it let's be better people to other people and that will help and go a long way with mental health illness because it all comes down to i feel like your interactions with other people that's how I feel about depression and anxiety. It all comes down to the human interactions. You can sometimes get PTSD or anxiety, like I said, from traumatic situations. And who controls traumatic situations? Other humans well, other humans. A woman can get PTSD from R-A-P. E, I can't say the word on YouTube, but you know what I mean. She can get PTSD from that. 
we're not gonna victim blame her and we're not going to blame her for acting a certain way or being scared of certain things because she didn't do that to herself another human being put her through that experience and as a result now she has to work through mental health issues so mental health issues come down to interactions that we have with other humans so let's work together to help people with mental health issues and hopefully step by step we make the world a better place because it starts with us at the end of the day if you are nice to other people other people will be nice to you if you hold the door for somebody somebody will say thank you if you give somebody a compliment on their makeup or their hair or their shoes you might make their day so let's all work together to help people with mental health issues and make the world a better place like i said that's gonna be wrapping up today's youtube video i'm so happy that i was able to touch on this topic i actually did a poll about what i should make this youtube video about um it was either gonna be me doing a story time on my childbirth which i still might do which was pretty fucking traumatic and um it was either this mental health video so i decided to do this instead i had so many votes to do this instead so i hope this mental health uh, mental health video helped some of y'all i hope i hoped i touched down i can't talk what the fuck i hoped i hopped and touched on topics that will help you guys if i didn't drop some comments below i am more than happy to make another mental health issue or mental health illness video i feel like it is not talked about enough we don't make youtube videos on it because as youtubers it's kind of a sad situation to talk about and who wants to talk about sad shit who wants to see sad shit no everybody wants to do fucking sheen hauls and vlogs of people going on vacation and people getting tattoos and people getting piercings you see all these happy and very positive aspects of people's lives and you don't see what people are going through behind cameras and people are dealing with fucking mental health issues every single day so let's talk about it a little bit more let's be more transparent and like i said let's work together to make the world a better place that's the ending of this video i hope you guys like it i hope you guys comment i hope you guys subscribe i'm definitely gonna continue to be more consistent with my youtube video i have been really doing this youtube shit for years <laughs> i remember i used to make youtube videos hip rolling and singing and shit now i'm making youtube videos trying to drop knowledge and just be as transparent as i can about my life so i hope that y'all enjoy this little journey that i have started and i hope y'all continue to be on it with me i hope y'all like my new hair because one thing about china trill y'all are gonna learn i never keep the same hair color for too long i hope y'all like my makeup if y'all want to see more makeup videos drop some comments about that below i can definitely record some get ready with me i'm definitely probably gonna record a get ready with me video or a vlog because my birthday is next week and i definitely gotta show y'all how the motherfucking girls turn up period i'm going to chicago so it's going to be really fucking fun um i will see you guys on my next youtube video i enjoy my time with my trillion babes so see you soon bye bye